Are you tired of the typical libraries with conventional music that makes you feel mad? Introducing Lyrics.com, the music website made for and by minds like you. Search the Lyrics music catalogs and find music with guaranteed originality at Lyrics.com. Uh, all right, so so we have uh, we have Selma Street Chemical Company. And you are based on... We're in New Orleans, New Louisiana. Orleans, New Orleans. All right, so we have Selma Street Chemical Company based in New Orleans. And the music, as you can hear, is fantastic. On the case. If you gotta go, leave me in ashes. I'll call on you some sunny day. It's just amazing. Oh, yeah. And we have all the members here, so why don't you guys introduce yourselves? All right, I'll go first. I'm Rob Schechter. I'm on bass. Brian Sax, drums. Taylor Cree, guitar. Francis Repass, sing guitar. Yeah, he did. He did some acoustic guitar on the on the recording, and I think I did some, some keys too. Somebody hit a tambourine at some point. <laughs> uh, Hand clap, shakers. Yeah, yeah, and uh, re we recorded all the drums for that track uh, right here in my living room. Um, and uh, all the guitars and bass are done here, overdubs. Um, let's see here. Francis went into another studio to do all the vocals and all those overdubs. And then uh, your brother-in-law, right? Yes, did the mixing. Um, We're keeping it close to home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> brother-in-law Nick Vitter did the uh, did the mixing. He'll be this. doing the mastering too. At some juncture, so it is yeah. a it is a very it is a true uh, homemade, self-made uh, production. It really sounds it really sounds absolutely professional. So, what is the secret? The the the, uh, the mixer, the, the technicians, the, the talent, of course. But uh, what do you think it was the most uh, challenging part of uh, this recording? Learning to do it and, yeah. then, <laughs> and then doing it. Yeah, it was a very long process. Yeah. A lot of, of, you know, takes that didn't make it in. A lot of recordings in places that didn't make it in. Yeah, I, I think we started um, with uh, just kind of like a, a scratch recording, and then we did all the drums, and that was like, that was probably like a year ago. And then uh, we, we had this huge... Uh, ghetto jury rigged system with like a whole bunch of audio inputs going going into the computer and, uh, and then we yeah re put together all of the tracks for the drums and I think I think that was like the most most challenging part and then and then finally uh, getting mus music recordings that we were happy enough to live with yeah. So what I what I get is that the the drums are live, they're not they're not uh, MIDI or anything. They're real. They're real drums. Oh no! Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we had the whole drum set here. Um, bought a bunch of like microphones and and some of it was just like getting like sure FM fifty or the SM fifty eights and just like sticking that around the thing and you know your your musical workhorse there and. Yeah. What, what do you yeah, think? Just, what do you think was the the, the, the most um, most important part to get this this uh, such quality in the sound of drums? What do you think? Did, did I was you... pretty baffled on it. Like when uh, when I when I, I started mixing it myself and was slowly driving myself crazy with like trying to get like the drum sound quality to where I was really happy with it and then uh, Nick somehow was able to put whatever kind of black magic he did on there to get like a really <laughs> wide like drum cymbal crash sound that, that I was just uh, eluding me um, so I don't know what he did there but it, it's pretty awesome the way like it sounds so full and like like you're in the living room listening to Brian smash some shit <laughs> yeah yeah it's just like a short it is Best performance possible is also nice. There was a lot of rehearsal. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That was going to be my, my next point. But for how long have you been playing? 
that I know, maybe more than three years. Uh, I have, I think. Yeah, yeah. 2013. Yeah. Hasn't it? You joined? 24. I joined in 2014. Okay. So. Yeah, for almost five years as a quartet, previously, mm -hmm. with another year before that as a trio. Yeah. How was how was the who was the original member? Uh, what why don't you tell us a little bit about the beginnings and the origin? How how did the band come uh, came to come about? Um, uh, who was Robert, the first one and the last Andrew. member? Well, I guess I was technically the first member. I. I was just moved to New Orleans and I was looking for bands that I found uh, an ad for a god prog rock band. I was looking for a guitarist and I was like, I don't really play prog rock, but then I clicked on it and it said like Tool Nine Inch Nails. I was like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> so I joined up with this bass player and he was the sort of the leader of the band. And then he found Brian on Craigslist and we were playing for a few times, you know, we had rehearsed a few times. And then, times it just kind of fizzled out and then Rob switched and to it, bass. Yeah, we fizzled out, the bass player uh, ended up leaving. Yeah, like, and I switched to bass and we put out an ad for guitarist and found Taylor. And um, he was the second guy we looked at and we're like, all right, this is, even though it doesn't bar his bar chords. Uh, <laughs> I, think he can... I don't even know what that means, man. <laughs> yeah, I moved to Louisiana in like early 2013. And the first thing I did when I got here was hop on Craigslist and look for people to jam with. Before I like looked for a job or anything, I'm like, I, this is New Orleans, damn it, we're gonna make some music. And uh, yeah, we next thing you know, he's in, he's in my living room, you know. Playing. Yeah. And Taylor started writing music, and um, yeah, we did that for about a year. Yeah, we had a couple live shows, but I was feeling like I was half-assing both singing and guitar playing, and I wanted to full ass one thing. So we found Francis yeah. on Craigslist. On Craigslist. <laughs> yeah. Craigslist. But I've always Thank been you, here. Craig. Yeah. <laughs> And I was, I'm a New Orleanian, and uh, I, you know, I think I played with them for like a couple weeks, and then I was like, you guys, I can't be in a band. And then I like left for like a year, and then, you know, he, uh, Taylor just asked me again out of the blue, like after New Year's on 2014. It was yeah. like, do you want to be in that band again? And I was like, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> so uh, I've been playing with them ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Stop running away and start singing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can confirm that singing and playing is just a half ass thing, you know. What, what, do, you mean, what, what do you mean? What do you mean with that? Sorry. Do, you, it is, do, you, do you feel that it's very, is very complicated? It's you should focus on only one thing. I, I, I didn't get that. Oh, um, yeah, I think, you know, I don't understand the one man bands, people who it's like doing two things at once. Um, multitasking, you know, that's why I uh, don't do it generally. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to accept that maybe I'm not a singer. That I should be. Maybe I'll do some ooze and ahs in the background or something. He's gotten pretty good at the ooze and ahs, been, actually. He's really become a very good background vocalist. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah. Yes. Extremely. <laughs> it, de it, 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 it definitely, whatever you do, it definitely takes, uh, you know, full focus and if, if you want to perform to your best ability. So definitely, I, I get that. But I was thinking, based in, in uh, New Orleans, and with such a culture with so much music how is it is it is it complicated to you know to uh be on the surface of or or, or make a name to yourself or how, how is it how, how do you feel being a band in in our experience <laughs> in our experience yes yeah. it is very difficult um yeah, if you have any ideas, yeah. <laughs> we're really open to hearing any. Um, our well, plan was to make really good recordings and try and like parlay that into some degree of, you know, getting sweet shows, playing with other bands, which we've done before, but uh, we'd love to do it in huge quantity, great amount, great quality. So many bands. It's very hard to make a name for yourself, but then again, there's tons of opportunity to, you know, 
yeah. be a small band. There's, and, there's a lot of live music venues, and uh, it's it's definitely one of like the premier music cities in the world. Yeah. Um, like some of the guys, like you'll just see walking down the street, you're just like, oh my god, this is it's like one of the best musicians I've ever seen, and it's just like some dude sitting on like a street corner just doing his thing. There's like a lot of inspiration, like no matter where you go, and you'll be surprised where you find it. Well, uh, my po my point, I guess my take on that is uh, the only way it's not going to happen, 100% sure it's not going to happen, if, is if you don't do anything about it. So uh, at, at least, uh, you know, you've been together for the amount of time, three, four years, five years, and it came about to, I guess, you are, you're playing live. Right, you're playing live and uh, playing gigs, and oh yeah, yeah, right, making music and and making this fantastic uh, recording. This is this uh, a one a single type of recording? Are you planning to to make a full record? What 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 are your plans about that? Full record, full record, yeah, yeah. We have uh, eight more tracks in the work right now, and planning on getting back in the studio to do another two this spring. So yeah, we're, we're pretty busy on the recording front. We're probably, we may just roll them out one at a time, but we're definitely going to compile them once we have them all. To yeah. mm -hmm. And what are your plans in the meantime? Uh, do you have like a tight, do you have like a uh, regular schedule uh, or certain venues that you always play where people can find you. What are the places that you know? If I if I go to New Orleans, I would find you and when. Bands don't always do uh, residencies here. Um, there's a few bands like that, um, but I don't think um, I don't think we do a residency anywhere. Or I don't know if we would. Yeah. Um, yeah, right now we're back on, on the hustle, trying to hit up booking managers and getting back out there. So. Is that how it works? Do you do you do you need to do you need to have a manager to to find places to play? It's probably no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe you know. we're self-managed right now. Yeah, know who we talk to. Well, yeah. yeah, a lot of people are part of some smaller um, independent labels, promoters, that kind of thing. But not us. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Is that something that you would like? What? What? What is? If you didn't have, uh, d you know, don't think outside the box and think just what we, what you'd like to get. What's that? What is that? How? How is the future of Selm Street Chemical Company? The the optimal future that you see. Just paint a picture. If you like play shows that. Uh, great local festivals. There are so many festivals, festivals you can like to break into. Yeah. 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 French Quarter Fest. There's so Quarter many Fest. venues and stuff. Yeah. We've never played Oyster at any Fest. big festivals. Oyster Fest, yeah. Fox for the Corret Street Fest. There's endless nice. festivals. There's a lot of festivals. There's multiple <laughs> stages at every festival. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of. Uh, yeah, we're making an every. Yeah, we're making an every. Yeah, we're making an every. Yeah, we're making an Okay, so. Uh, it's it's you'd like to keep it local like play local festivals not becoming like a band going around the world is what is that what is that sweet spot that you're looking for i think yeah i don't think we've ever talked about like taking it on the road or anything but like our main thing is like we want to give back to the city with so much great live music with our own live music yeah, be a part of that. Well, sounds good. Sounds good, good to me. Like... Sounds good to me. And um, we didn't speak about this, but really, I think it's important to to discuss your influences. What are your? Do you find that you know across the board you have more or less the same taste or or musical background, or you know, is there a huge difference that meets in the middle um, while you're playing? I'd say there's a sizable overlap in all our musical tastes. Um, 
and you know each of us has our own weird music fetishes but you know <laughs> Speak in general about that. there's like <laughs> talk, talk about that. <laughs> there's got to be a better way to say that yeah um, yeah ryan's like a walking classic rock encyclopedia and he's turned me on to like all sorts of great like like deep jazz stuff that like i never would have like probably found on my own and uh and i've gotten really big into like country and folk over the past couple of years and i think you like kind of hear a little bit of that on the recording um and we all kind of like prog and like psychedelic stuff too a little bit you know what do you like rob uh, there's a strong pink boy current that runs through our yeah um cases. yeah we cover some pink floyd we cover some grateful dead some t-rex up and underground Open yeah underground. And then give it a country twang, I guess. <laughs> well, that's that's fantastic. Uh, what's the influence to to the lyrics, and and you know, what are the topics that you normally discuss, in particular for this song? What what is it about? For this song, I guess I took an approach of um, you know stuff that sounded cool. It was kind of written in parts, and like it was just the phrase "Leave me in ashes" with a kind of doo wop feel. And I was like, what does it mean? <laughs> so I started to try and like apply my own life to like a thing. And it's about like, you know, uh, leave me in ashes, like the stuff you leave behind or the people who leave you behind trying to just move on with everything you've got. Basically, it's like a, it's supposed to be an uplifting thing while sort of nostalgic to like being pulled in both directions or whatever, you know. There's like a duality to existing where you're like alive in both parts of the past always and going forward. So I don't know, parts of it like, you know, are stuff that I remember from, you know, being a young lad in New Orleans running around and being foolish and uh, being a foolish adult. So <laughs> it's, uh, I like to think it applies to people in some way or that it even comes across in some way. Hopefully I express things in a way that people sort of just Uh, feel whatever they want, you know, and it's almost impossible to understand what the lyrics are. I like that. I like I, that. I like those type. I like those type of lyrics. They're open, uh, you know, to make it your own, to to acquire them and, and and put it in your life, you know, adapt it like a skin to your life. And is it you? Is that are you are you the one who always writes the lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, uh, I mean, almost always. Uh, some songs I, I do like different approaches. Uh, there's so many lyrical approaches you can take, uh, you know, so you gotta try them all to see what's good. And uh, I don't know, sometimes you write something, you're like, well, I don't cringe as hard when I hear those lyrics. <laughs> so we'll go with that. And you gotta take different approaches to get to that point where you can listen to yourself. Um, Is that difficult? Especially. I find I find that I find that difficult for for oh, a lot of, for a lot of musicians, I, like to listen to yourself. How 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 is that? How does it feel? Oh, it is difficult yeah, yeah. to listen to myself. Um, uh, fortunately, I uh, I just you know sing on my own and in my house and in the shower in front of my roommates so often that you know I just stop minding hearing myself. It's I've uh, become inured to it, sort of inoculated to myself. Are you uh, very <laughs> self-critical? Are you very self? All of you guys, are you are you very self-critical? Like, can you can are you pointing to every oh I missed that note or whatever? Is that is that something you do? Just in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah. It almost gets you know, to like the point where we. Uh, had to uh, stop letting me mix things because I tweak things ad infinitum and just uh, give it to our buddy Nick to... Uh... Taylor puts so much into these recordings, into this production. It is insane. He learned like multiple different everythings, like the interfacing with programs, how to record, all this stuff. He just learned so much. It's insane. We're, we're posting uh, new tracks on our band camp um as as we uh, get them back from the uh, mixing master okay so let's talk about then um where can we find uh your music and what are uh the sites or the platforms that uh, you are on uh, let us know and also if you have a common gigs 
what are those places that we can find you? Just give me an overview, please. Bandcamp, I guess, is the place to find the music. Uh, if you just Google Selma Street Chemical Company, you should find all of our outlets. We've got Bandcamp and Facebook and Instagram. And I think that's... We have a Twitter, but I'm not going to complain. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, so any upcoming gigs will be cross-posted on all those platforms. So, yeah, find us on Facebook, find us on Instagram. Uh, you'll be able to find everything else. Selma Street Chemical Company, all spelled out the normal way. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well... Uh... I got to... Keep your eyes on the social media, you'll, you'll We'll find you on social playing. media and we'll be very uh, happy to learn about any news that come from Selma Street Chemical Company and it's been a real, real pleasure. Really, the music is fantastic and we're going to gonna keep an, an eye on you and uh, follow up very soon and thank you very much. Thank you very much for talking with us and uh, you know all the best for the future and thanks. to finish that thanks. recording thanks for having us thank okay. you it's been great thank you thank you guys Are you tired of the typical libraries with conventional music that makes you feel mad? Introducing Lyrics.com, the music website made for and by minds like you. Search the Lyrics music catalogs and find music with guaranteed originality at Lyrics.com.